Are you confused on how to choose a display for your MacBook Pro or your Mac Studio? Well, don't bother your girlfriend. If you're not interested in watching the rest of this video, it's actually quite easy. Just pick a display with a pixel per inch density or PPI of 220 if you have a retina display or 110 if you have a non-retina display. What is PPI? PPI stands for pixels per inch and it is a standard used to measure the pixel density of any display. What is important to understand here is that PPI is the absolute best sharpness benchmark. It is much better than resolution. The more PPI your display has, the finer the details in the image appearing on your display will be. But why 220 PPI, you're probably wondering. Well, that is because Apple, in its infinite wisdom and based on their studies, has decided that 220 pixel per inch gives the best result in terms of sharpness. More PPI than that isn't useful since the human eye is not capable of appreciating the difference, or so says Apple. Therefore, it is not a surprise to find out that macOS has two modes. 110 PPI to accommodate non-retina displays and 220 PPI for retina displays. Note that from this point on, I will only be focusing on 220 PPI since all Macs sold since 2018 have retina display. There are three display configurations which achieve a pixel density of 220. That's 4K at 21 and a half inch, 5K at 27 inch, and 6K at 32 inch. So it is no surprise that Apple Studio Display is 5K at 27 inch and the Pro SDR is, you guessed it, 6K at 32 inch. The problem with display with an optimal PPI of 220 is that there are very few to select from. The vast majority of displays, including most of the display I see as recommended for Macs, typically have either 140 or 160 PPI and that is not ideal for Macs. So the big question is, what happens if you buy a display which does not have the ideal 220 PPI? Will you be able to use it with your Mac? Sure you will, but it is important to understand what happens when you do use a non-optimal display for not all is good and sometimes it can even be downright awful. There are two ways to use a display with non-optimal pixel density. First, it is to do nothing and let macOS render at its native resolution. If you do that, everything will work just fine, but icons and text will most likely look too large since your display doesn't have enough pixel space. Your 140 or 160 PPI display is in effect too small for macOS, which is going to force 220 PPI into a 140 or 160 PPI space. In other words, your display doesn't have enough resolution. But that in itself doesn't have to be a problem as long as you don't mind bigger icons and text. However, based on my experience, what happened is everything looks weird, everything just looks too big and you won't like it. Also note that conversely, if you were to use a display with more than 220 PPI, then it would be the opposite and text and icon would appear too small for now, your display is too big for macOS. It has too much pixel space. Or said differently, its resolution is too high. But that is extremely unlikely, for there are very few displays out there which have PPI greater than 220. 
So the most common side effect of using a non-ideal PPI density display with a Mac is larger text and icon. The second solution is to turn on the display scaling option in System Preference. When you do that, your text and icons will look the right size, but all kind of not so good things will be happening behind the scene that you need to be aware of and understand. I'm going to cut to the chase and oversimplify the explanation. The way display scaling works is as follows. When using macOS display scaling option, the user interface is going to shrink or to downsample your 220 ppi image to fit within the lower ppi density of your display. Since it is not a perfect match, 200 converted to 160 or even 140 is not a one-to-one -one pixel conversion, the downsample pixel are not going to map perfectly between the two resolution and image quality will suffer. Things will look a little blurry, particularly around the edges. Additionally, your GPU now has to do more work in order to downsample pixel and then can slow down your computer. If you have a modern and powerful enough machine, you might not even notice it. But if you don't, you could experience significant lag when turning on display scaling option. That is why, personally, I decided to go with the Apple Studio display. I didn't want any of the side effects of turning display scaling on. And also, I didn't want my screen to look weird with text and icon that just looked too big. And the only way for me to achieve that was to go with a display with 220 ppi. Cumbia.